Hey everybody, this is the lecture for English 101 Module 12. Um, so this week you read Jean Anyon's Social Class and the Hidden Curriculum of Work. I asked you to compare this article to the Terrace et al. article that you read last week, as well as other texts we've read and discussed this semester. Uh, in this lecture, I'm going to give you some context to help you understand these articles and why are, we are comparing and contrasting them now um, as you're getting ready to embark on your third essay assignment. The Anion, Terrace, and Bartholomew texts are all academic journal articles. Uh, this means that they were all written by professional scholars, university professors, and peer-reviewed by other scholars before they were published. However, these articles are from different fields of study. Terrace is a cognitive psychologist, uh, Bartholomew is an English professor, and Anyon is an education professor. Scholars in all fields of study, you know, every discipline, um, every academic discipline in the university, write arguments. However, the kind of research they use to make these arguments and the evidence they use to support them depends on their particular discipline. An academic discipline is just a field of study. The terrorist study um, of NIM was an experiment. The team had a hypothesis, they studied NIM in a lab, and they collected quantitative um, or numerical data. To prove their hypothesis, Terris and his team counted NIM's utterances, um, or signs, and compared numbers. Anyon's study was an ethnography, which is a type of research often used in the social sciences disciplines like education, social psychology, sociology, etc. Um, some of you said that her, uh, her work sounded like sociology in the, um, in, on the discussion forum. I just want to make clear, she's not a sociologist, right? She's an education professor. Sociology, like education, is social science, right? But these, those are like distinct fields of study. Anyway, back to Anyon. She observed uh, classrooms and interviewed teachers in schools, um, and her data was qualitative, meaning it was descriptions of people, places, and conversations. Um, to analyze this data, she had to interpret it in relationship to theory, and that's how people do ethnographic research. Different research practices uh, in data shape how ar arguments show up in academic writing. The class noticed some similarities and differences between the Anyon article um, and the Terrace article on the Module 12 discussion forum. So I'm going to summarize these here. First, I'll talk about similarities. Both articles start with a brief summary of the argument. This is called an abstract. Uh, both articles divided um, the text into sections with headings letting the reader know what to expect in each section. Both articles used italics to highlight key terms, ideas, um, and areas of the paper. Uh, both articles use a specialized discourse. So these are words like experiment, study, analyze, interpret. Um, this is terminology that is not normally used in ordinary conversation, but you see it a lot in academic writing. Um, I, notice, I want you to notice uh, how both authors d define their key terms early on in their papers. So for example, Terrace et al. defined sentence, right? Um, and then Anyon defined social class, middle class, hidden curriculum, etc. Um, it's important to keep in mind, like, these authors don't assume that their audiences would define these terms the same way they do, um, which is in a theoretically informed way. Defining key terms is an important rhetorical move in academic writing that lays the foundation for, uh, for your audience to understand your argument. This is something you guys should be doing in your own essays. More similarities between the articles. Um, they both use a formal structure to represent their research and conclusions. More formal than Bartholomew's structure in his essay, right? Which kind of felt conversational. They start with abstracts, um, followed by an introduction, a description of methods, discussion, and conclusion. This is the way science and social science articles are usually put together, uh, but not always. Why do you think academics and disciplines like biology, chemistry, psychology, and education, the sciences and social sciences, use this organizational pattern? Uh, what are the benefits and drawbacks? Both articles address the so what uh, 
who cares question in the intro through identifying previous research. Here are some quotes from the text where they do this. So Anyon in her intro says, um, quote, scholars in political economy and sociology of knowledge have recently argued that public schools in complex industrial societies like our own make available different types of educational experience and curriculum knowledge to students in different social classes. And then Tara says in his intro, the innovative studies of the gardeners and pre-Mac show that a chimpanzee can learn substantial vocabularies of words of visual languages. Right? So the way that they're kind of showing that this is important is there's like, look, other people are doing this research. Other people are interested in this research question that I've established, right? Um, and then, you know, they kind of go on to, you know, add, add to the knowledge that's already been created. Um, some of you felt like it was more difficult to, uh, to figure out the so what of the terrorist article. Uh, that was because the language was inaccessible. Um, it was hard to relate to for many of us. To a science person with a similar background to terrorists, it would have been easier to see why their argument mattered. Um, and for some of you with like more science backgrounds in class, maybe it was more readily apparent to you. However, this brings up an interesting point. Is, is it a problem that academic writing in the sciences is so inaccessible to a general audience compared to academic writing in a field like education? Right? This is something to think about um, kind of as you head into your next essay. All right, differences between the articles. Uh, the articles display their data or evidence differently. A lot of you talked about this in your forum posts. So Terrace et al. used tables and figures or images to show the results of their experiment. Tables and figures are usually how quantitative data, like data that has to do with numbers, uh, is represented. Evidence in Anyon is displayed in written descriptions of people, places, and in instructional materials and transcripts of conversations between students and teachers. This is how qualitative data is usually represented. Uh, all right, uh, another difference. Uh, the articles use different discipline-specific terminology. So here are some examples. Uh, Terris uh, says uh, at one point, in no instance were specific sequences, contractions, or simultaneous combinations reinforced differentially. Right? It sounds very sciencey. Anyon, at, a, at one point in her paper, says, since each of the five schools is only one instance of elementary education in a particular social class context, I will not generalize beyond that sample. Right? So embedded in these sentences are all these little clues um, about what field of study uh, this writer is writing in, right? And if you can identify the key terms, if you can learn to use them in your own writing, then you can become a really successful academic writer in your field. Uh, another difference is Anyon offered more explanation and background for her study. Um, this is just, again, has to do with the type of research she was doing. Uh, this is important in representing qualitative research. You have to provide a lot of context. There wasn't as much context in the Terrace article, right? So think about everything that was left out um, in the article that was included in the film that you watched last week about the study. His focus was really about the numbers. So now that you've compared and contrasted these articles and have a better sense of what academic lo writing looks like in different disciplines, you'll begin your final research project for this course. For this assignment, you'll investigate academic writing in your major field. Uh, how are articles in your discipline structured? What kind of data is represented? And what kind of conclusions are made and why? Your homework for next week is to read the essay three task description. Um, and then, you know, let me know if you have questions. Uh, we want to start this assignment early and take our time with it since you can't revise it uh, to improve your grade. All right, so that's it. Have a great weekend. Bye.